The Compton effect. So this effect shows us that electron, uh, the light consists of photons which carry energy, uh, HF, Planck's constant times frequency, or HC over lambda, which is Planck's constant times speed of light divided by the wavelength. And they carry momentum, which is related to their energy by E is equal to PC. So the momentum is E over C, which is H over lambda. So how did Compton reach this conclusion? The experiment is scattering of X-rays from electrons. We have an X-ray source that produces X-rays at a wavelength lambda zero. It's a monochromatic source. The wavelength is 0.071 nanometers. These rays are collimated by uh, passing through this uh, slit and they are incident on a carbon target. Then we see these scattered X-rays at an angle theta with respect to the incoming uh, wave propagation direction. And these rays are incident on a crystal spectrometer. We know the uh, interplanar separation uh, for uh, planes parallel to the surface. And uh, we can measure this angle alpha to determine the wavelength lambda prime uh, which produces our uh, constructive interference. So 2D sine alpha is equal to m lambda prime. So the crystal spectrometer determines the wavelength of the incident radiation by measuring the angle alpha. And then we have this uh, ray uh, that is scattered from the crystal spectrometer incident on the ionization chamber, which measures intensity of the incoming beam and it has a current that is, it produces a current that is proportional to the intensity. So therefore, we can find uh, the wavelength and the intensity of the corresponding beam uh, independently, and we can plot intensity as a function of wavelength. And we see that depending on this angle theta, we get a different result. For theta is equal to zero, we see the primary beam with a single peak at lambda zero. And for theta greater than zero, we see the appearance of another peak. So uh, this other peak is at wavelength lambda prime, and that is due to the scattering of X-rays from uh, free electrons. Uh, the scattering from the tightly bound electrons produces a lambda zero peak. And as theta increases, we see that this lambda prime peak shifts to higher wavelengths. So that is what we would like to explain. If you look at the classical theory, when we have X-rays incident on the surface, what would be the effect? We should see a radiation pressure. The incoming uh, momentum that is being transferred by the electromagnetic radiation is the energy carried by electromagnetic radiation divided by the speed of light. And the pressure that it will exert is 1 over the area dpdt, force, which is a rate of change of linear momentum. And that is equal to the magnitude of the pointing vector S divided by C for complete absorption, as we have discussed in the electromagnetic waves uh, section of this course. So as a result of this radiation pressure being exerted on the electrons, the electrons should accelerate in the propagation direction of the electromagnetic waves. Now regarding the uh, wavelength of the light that is detected by the crystal spectrometer, there should be two Doppler shift effects. The electrons should oscillate at the apparent frequency F prime, Doppler shifted frequency in the electron frame. Let's say that the electron is moving with a speed V0 towards the source, towards the source of the X-rays, and therefore it will see an increase in frequency F1 prime, F0 times V plus V0 over V, that's Doppler shifted. Now these moving electrons uh, will also produce uh, radiation, uh, re they will re-radiate, and now we have the electron acting as the source of radiation, so we will see another Doppler shift when the, the this electron is approaching the detector, F0 times V over V minus Vs. 
Now, the speed of the electron V0 and Vs do not have a single value. We have a distribution of electrons moving at different speeds. So therefore, what do we expect? We, we should expect to see intensity versus wavelength at different angles showing a distribution of these Doppler shifted values. So Doppler shifted frequencies will translate to uh, changes in the detected uh, wavelength. But, however, we don't see this uh, background uh, due to the distribution of uh, different uh, speeds of the electrons. Instead, we see these two peaks, one at lambda zero, one at lambda prime. So we need to have a non-classical explanation of this phenomenon. So in summary, Compton effect is an experiment uh, that is performed by using an X-ray source uh, producing waves incident on a carbon target where the intensity of the scattered uh, wavelength is measured, uh, intensity is measured as a function of wavelength and uh, we vary the angle theta with respect to the incoming uh, ray direction uh, and we determine the evolution of intensity uh, uh, with uh, angle. So we see that as the angle increases from 0 to 90 to 135, the appearance of another peak uh, is seen at lambda prime and this lambda prime shifts to higher uh, wavelengths as the angle is increased. Now we can attribute the uh, scattering from tightly bound electrons producing this uh, lambda zero and we can attribute lambda prime due to the interaction of uh, x-rays with the free electrons. But how should we treat this is uh, an open question at this point. Now classical theory predicts that the incoming rays will produce uh, due to momentum transfer uh, pressure, radiation pressure, which is given by a pointing vector magnitude S over C for complete absorption, and the electrons should accelerate in the propagation direction of these waves. The electrons, as an observer of the incoming radiation and as a source of the uh, re-radiation, will have Doppler shifted frequencies. Therefore, we should see intensity versus wavelength at different angles, giving us a distribution of Doppler shifted values, which is a reflection of the fact that electrons will be moving at different speeds. So this classical uh, prediction is actually not correct. According to the experiment, we have the appearance of these uh, two peaks.